Ladies and gentlemen, namaskar. A very warm welcome to the 15th edition of Jaipur Literature Festival, protected by Detol Banega Swast India. We are delighted to introduce the invisible majority and the freedom of movement. The session is presented by Business Standard. The disability rights movement in India is salient but underrepresented. Professor Anita Sharma called over 2,000 driving schools in India and she wanted to check if they have anything for the disabled persons and there was none. She herself having survived polio and knowing the requirement to learn the skill, confidently she began on my own. Nipun Malotra is an Indian social entrepreneur and disability rights activist. He was born with arthrogryposis and founded the Nipman Foundation, an organization in the area of health and advocacies for the person with disabilities. CK Meena and V. R. Feroz have co-authored an insightful book on the lives of persons with disabilities in India. The book is The Invisible Majority, India's Abled Disabled. Nipun Malhotra is the co-founder and CEO of Nipman Foundation that works in the area of health. He's a visiting research fellow at Word Enabled Pineda Foundation Initiative. He is the founder chair of the FIKI DNI Working Group on Empowering Persons with Disability and is on the board of directors at Vishwash, a nonprofit working on disability and development. During COVID, he helped 21,000 families who had disabled persons and he provided them with rations and other amenities. C.K. Mina, a Bengaluru-based journalist, she has written two other books along with this book, The Invisible Majority with V.R. Feroz. We want to start this session with Ravindra Singh, who has been playing flute since last five years. It was his inner call that he has to play, and a flute which he bought for five rupees in a mela, he mastered it over the years. And his first song was Pankha Hote Tu Ude Jati Re, which means if I would have had feathers, I would have been flying high in the sky, and he is flying high.
Jackson. So, ladies and gentlemen, the, the invisible majority and the freedom of movement, Nipun Malhotra on the screen, Sikimina, we are Feroz in conversation with Sonjo Roy. Good morning and uh, welcome back to uh, the eighth day of the Jaipur Literature Festival, the third day on ground. I hope you all are having a fabulous time. I'd like to thank all our viewers who are watching us online. And we've got uh, VR Feroz, who's joined us from California, from the Bay Area. Viro uh, Feroz, I don't know what time it is there. I suspect it's 2.30 a.m. or 3.30 a.m., but thank you so much for joining us from there. How are you? Sanjay, sir. It is 9.45 p.m., so I'm still in the Bay Area. So, uh, can you hear me? We can hear you. We can also see you. Good, good. Yeah, so it's not too bad. I'm, I'm excited, and thank you for inviting me. Thank you, VR, and thank you, uh, Nipun. We are so sad that you couldn't join us today, Nipun. Are you well? Uh, yeah, I'm fine. Something. Uh, I'm really sorry that I couldn't be there physically. I was excited to be there, but... Uh, uh, so some logistical challenges, but uh, thank you for inviting me and look forward to interacting with you. So for those of you who don't know, the Nipman Foundation that Nippon uh, founded uh, supplies the wheelchairs and mobility partners here at the Jaipur Literature Festival for the past many years. So just to acknowledge that and thank you, Nippon, for all your help. Absolutely. I'm going to start uh, with C.K. Meena, um, who's written the book, and just to thank Ravindra Ji, thank you so much. Aap yahan pe aaye. Main subhe ke vakt, uh, jo me mera hotel, jo kamra hai, which is just outside, main niche aa raha tha, to maine inka uh, flute ka awaz uh, uh, saare chhe baje, saad baje suna, and it was just amazing. To us vakt maine hotel se poocha ki kyun uh, uh, inko hum uh, ye session ke पहले में क्यों नहीं ये बजा सकते और उनका स्टोरी भी हम सबके साथ शेयर कर सकते हैं तो हम रविंद्र के बारे में थोड़ा कहेंगे अभी थैंक यू रविंद्र बहुत बढ़िया था मैं अभी आपसे पूछूंगा सी के मीना दिस इज सच एन इम्पोर्टेंट बुक दैट वी आर फिरोज ब्रॉड टू मी आई नो फिरोज प्राइमरली बिकॉज वन ऑफ आर कॉलीग्स फ्रॉम द सलाम बालक ट्रस्ट विकी रॉय Uh, has been photographing uh, disabled people and caregivers across the length and breadth of the country and that's how we were introduced uh, we are when he came into town bought ck who i've known for many many years because she is a great theater person and she's been part of our meta jury uh, i mean how did this book come about and what was your discovery uh, when you were talking about the invisible majority in earlier times many of these people were locked away and we couldn't see them Tell us a little bit about what you found in the book. Uh, actually, the book uh, exists because of Feroz, because I've been a journalist. I have written about disability and uh, marginalized communities because I've been a feature writer. But uh, I wouldn't have thought, dreamt really, of writing an entire book about it until I met Feroz. And uh, he being a very persuasive individual, he can coax you to do anything. Uh, total charmer, okay? Okay, Feroz, I hope you're listening. <laughs> so I met him in November 2018, and he sort of open, opened my eyes to this whole world of uh, disability that I hadn't encountered before, although I had written about it. So uh, some of the learnings that I got from just sitting down in one session, I said, I'm on board. And since he's obviously in California and can't come here, and this happens to be, by the way, a pretty comprehensive and a non-academic book for the general reader, which gives you an end-to-end -end view of disability in India, in India specifically. Uh, and I'm fairly confident that, that something like this hasn't been done before. I think you might discover that yourself. So the, one of the learnings really important that I learned from, the, from uh, working on the book and going across the length and breadth of uh, the country, talking to uh, 64 people, face to face mostly, sometimes uh, you know, on phone, etc., was 
the first line of the book. So when Firoz spoke to me about it, what really struck me, uh, Sanjoy, is what you will see if you look at the book, that disability affects all of us, should be uh, you know, important to all of us, because at some point or the other, if you live long enough, you will acquire a disability if you, even if you don't already have one. So that is why this book becomes important to everybody, and that is why the majority really, you don't realize it yourself, right? But uh, this is what uh, was the most important thing. We are, uh, how did you come about taking disability as uh, one of the issues that you wanted to talk about so passionately? What changed in your life? You were on the fast track to great success. Uh, so what changed and what made you such an impassioned advocate and policy driver for disabled? So, you know, I have to rewind a little bit here uh, to put it in context. The year was 2010. I was based in Bangalore. I was heading SAP, which is a huge multinational. Uh, I was leading a team of 5,000 people. Uh, when my 18-month-old son was diagnosed with autism. Uh, I had no clue what autism was, like everybody else. Uh, the first person I went to was Dr. Google, and I typed down, what is autism? Uh, that's where I started, and, and the more I tried to understand, uh, the more I tried to dig deeper into it, I realized how complex the situation is. Uh, and so for me, that was the starting point of discovery. And I must tell you that after 10 years, I'm still in the path of discovery because it's an incredibly complex problem uh, that we are talking about. Uh, and I've been very fortunate to spend the last seven years in the US, but I spent the first five years until my son was uh, five years old in India. Uh, and I realized that the situation was pretty grave. Uh, my son is now 13 years old, he's non-verbal. Uh, if he was still in India, he probably wouldn't have been able to pursue any form of education. Um, he speaks by a method, or he communicates using a method called rapid prompt method, which is by spelling and pointing at alphabets, which is a very slow and tedious process. But basically in the last 10 years, uh, I was fully invested in trying to not just understand the space for my son, but trying to make a difference to the larger community. And that led to the beginning of my own foundation called the India Inclusion Foundation, where our mission is to spread awareness across the billion people uh, in India. So that's basically a summary of the last 10 years, Sanjay sir. Thanks, uh, Firoz. I'm going to come back about caregivers. Going on to Nipun, Nipun, uh, yeah. Uh, Justice Waziri uh, recently in the Delhi High Court uh, brought about a fabulous ruling and when uh, he called the Delhi government back to court, the Delhi government said, oh, you know, we fixed all the pavements, etc. And he said, no, take somebody on a wheelchair who's not being pushed and film the fact that he can uh, wheel himself on the pavements in a particular area of Delhi. This was a landmark judgment which we hope will bring about better mobility access to those with wheelchairs. Nipun, give us a sense of what the challenges are still, and why is it that we still design buildings without any access whatsoever for those with mobility disadvantage? Uh, yeah, I'm glad you brought up Justice Waziri's comments, because I think they are uh, historic in nature. But interestingly, unfortunately, it's also a repetition of what happened five years back in the same Delhi High Court when Justice Geeta Mittal was really the acting chief justice. And that was actually based on a PL that I had filed when the Delhi, the Delhi government started the odd even scheme first. And then later, they also decided to buy 2,000 buses that were inaccessible. I actually went around with a camera looking at bus stops, uh, road crossings, et cetera, showing how inaccessible they are. And that led to a mobility audit of Delhi, but unfortunately, nothing really happened after that. Uh, so a lot needs to be done. I mean, uh, I've been reading news that in 2048, there might, Delhi is bidding for the Olympics in Delhi. Let's not wait till 2048 to make Delhi accessible. Hope, I hope it does happen faster. Uh, but when it comes to specific infrastructure and why buildings are, that are made are not really accessible, I think a lot also depends on the laws and policies in the country. India has a historic uh, Rights of Persons with Disabilities Act 2016 that India introduced. 
uh, but unfortunately what's happened is that nothing on paper has really transformed into action. Uh, the act spoke about how every building needs to be accessible, the government was given a five year uh, timeline to implement it etc as well. But uh, not a single state across political parties has changed the building bylaws to include accessibility. So today a building can get a completion certificate without really being accessible in that sense too. So I think we need to harmonize all laws in this country. We don't really need to look at disability as just one ministry or one department or one particular law. But uh, get in the urban development ministry, get in uh, the surface transport ministry, get in everybody else really together and look at disability uh, as an entire ecosystem while uh, planning anything in this country. And I think till that doesn't happen, uh, disability will be compartmentalized and change really will not be able to happen. Uh, Ravindra ji, um, मुझे थोड़ा सबको बताइएगा कि किस तरीके से आपने अपना पढ़ाई की किस वक्त वो ऑन है आपके हम आपके पास ले आते यहाँ पे पकड़िएगा आप थोड़ा बताइएगा कि जब जब आपने आपका जब आप पैदे हुए थे तो क्या आपका हियरिंग प्रॉब्लम वही सींग प्रॉब्लम वहीं से था जी सबसे पहले तो सभी आदरणीय सम्माननीय लोगों को मैं अपने हृदय से तन मन धन से प्रणाम करता हूँ सो uh, so, मैं अपने बारे में यही बताना चाहूँगा कि जब मेरा जन्म हुआ था पंद्रह मई दो हज़ार तीन को मेरा जब जन्म हुआ था तीन बजकर दस मिनट पे तब से लेकर बीस दिन तक मेरी जो आँखों की जो है आँखें मेरी तब खुली नहीं थी आंखें खुलने के बाद ये पता चला कि जब मेरे आंखें खुली तो मुझे कुछ खिलौना रखा तो मैं मुझे पता नहीं चला तो मतलब दृष्टि इनमें पाया गया जब मेरे को हॉस्पिटल में जब एडमिट कराया तो डॉक्टरों ने भी हमारी जांच की और हमें ये बताया कि इनका जो है कहीं इलाज नहीं हो सकता है फिर हम अपनी जो है अपने आप को फिर भी हमने अपने आप को कभी कमज़ोर नहीं समझा आंखें नहीं होने के बावजूद भी और जब आंगनबाड़ी वगैरह में हम शिक्षा शिक्षा वगैरह हम हम करते थे जब हम सात साल के हुए तो हमने जोधपुर में जो है ब्लाइंड स्कूल में एडमिशन लिया गवर्नमेंट में सो वहाँ पे हम अपने आप को स्थापित नहीं कर पाए दो जब दस में एडमिशन हुआ था दो से लेकर दो फिर हमने वहाँ से छोड़ दिया और पाली पाली जो डिस्ट्रिक्ट है राजस्थान में वहाँ से हमने नॉर्मल संस्था से आठवीं तक हमने वहाँ शिक्षा प्राप्त की और फिर उसके बाद अब हम आगे भी दसवीं करना चाहते हैं ओपन और सो आई वांट से दैट आई कैन प्ले सो लिटिल लिटिल फ्लूट आई कैन प्ले सो कंप्यूटर्स आई आई प्ले क्रिकेट्स एंड सो आई एम वेरी हैप्पी टू यू सो लिटरेचर फेस्टिवल्स आई वेलकम वॉर्मली Uh, all of uh, our listeners और मैं अपने यही बताना चाहूँगा कि 2017 में जब मैं मेले में गया था तो वहाँ से एक छोटी सी पाँच सौ रुपये की जो है मैंने बांसुरी खरीदी थी और उसका मैंने बहुत प्रयास किया बहुत प्रयास किया नहीं हमसे बच पाई लेकिन एक आखिरकार में जो कहते हैं कि कोशिश करने वालों की हार नहीं होती तो वही हमने हार नहीं मानी तो हमने उसका जो है प्रयास भी किया और उस एक बार में वो जो है गाना बज गया और प्रथम जो इंग्लिश स्कूल होता है वहाँ हमने गाना बजाया तो हमको वहाँ प्रथम पुरस्कार मिला था और आगे भी हम यही जारी रखना चाहते हैं और यही मैं बताना चाहूँगा कि जब मेरा शिक्षा हुई थी तो दादा दादी का सबसे ज़्यादा मेरा सपोर्ट हुआ है और मैं सभी से उम्मीद करता हूँ कि आप मेरी कहानी से ज़रूर संतुष्ट होंगे Thank you, Ravindra. Uh, Vr, tell us a little bit about what is the pressure on the caregiver when it comes to uh, looking after kids with disability, and how does that impact on the family system, and how does it impact, obviously, on the financial uh, uh, health of that particular family, and what are the what, if any, uh, are possible support systems that is made available? either by private uh, foundations or by government that's a important question you asked sanjay sir because i think one of the 
the things that we completely forget is caring for the caregivers. I think this is a completely ignored element uh, in India. And I can tell you, uh, if you have a, a dis child with disability, the pressure, not just the financial pressure, but just the pressure to survive on a day-to-day -day basis becomes incredibly hard. And uh, I think I am extremely fortunate to have the resources to take care of not just my child, but also my family and extended family. Let me give you one specific example. Um, you know, taking care of a person with disability, at least in my case, is a 24 by 7 task. Uh, my son is uh, fully dependent on us, so right from brushing his teeth to giving him a shower to feeding him has to be entirely taken care of by me and my wife and the, uh, and, and, uh, the other family members as well. One of the very simple policies that happens in the US is to give caregivers 20 hours of relief time, which is actually given by the state itself, which means for 20 hours in a month, somebody will come to your house and take care of your child, and you and your wife can actually go maybe watch a movie, maybe go out for shopping together. Uh, statistics show that more than 60 to 70 percent of the families which have children with disability almost ends up in broken relationships because they just don't have the time for each other. So even getting those 20 hours in a month of relief time is so incredibly important because it helps you to recharge yourself and be in a better position to take care of your children. I'm not even talking about the financial pressure. My wife used to work for SAP and for the last 10 years she had to quit her job. Uh, to become a full-time mother. Most of the times, it's the mothers who have who give up their careers. So I'm not even talking about the financial impact, uh, but just the fact that to keep relationships alive, you know, support systems are so fundamentally important. Again, I've been very fortunate that my parents and in-laws do spend a lot of time and help us uh, with our son. But it is a very, very important element to take care of the caregivers. Thank you, Farooq. Uh, Mina, you know, he's talking about the fact that his family was, I mean, he and his family have been able to support uh, their child. What did you find when you were doing these interviews? And what was the impact on those families who don't have uh, the recourse or, in fact, the knowledge? What happens in semi-urban uh, and rural settings where there's no necessarily no Google or no access to Google? How do they cope with even understanding the essence of disability? Uh, actually, uh, it all depends on what background you come from. Now, as uh, Sanjoy said, supposing you are in a rural area in India, let's start even with a simple thing like diagnosis. How do you, when do you find out? Uh, in the case of uh, Ravindra, obviously it, it became very obvious, but there are invisible disabilities as well. So uh, the earlier, the better when it comes to diagnosis, because then you have to take the person through education, then you're talking employment, then you're talking also of assisted living, which is uh, helping them live independently and inter interdependently. So in the beginning, it has to be awareness. So obviously, the government does need to play a huge role. There's something called inclusive education, right? Employers have to be sensitive and create an accessible work environment and provide them what's called a reasonable accommodation. That's the term, right? So all of this, obviously, we are a long way behind. But as the book will tell you, there are people doing this. You know, there, are, there have been pioneers who haven't been spoken about. For example, there is an Umatuli who in Delhi who pioneered the whole idea of inclusive education. There's Mary Barua who has been talking of autism when people, the common person, did not even know what the word was, right? So in, in that sense, there are individuals and organizations whom we contacted, and let me tell you, most of the contacts are Feroz's. Over 10 years, he's been building up, you know, an uh, incredible, uh, you know, network of useful and uh, committed individuals and organizations. So uh, obviously, all he had to do was give me the list, and I go and speak to them all. And uh, so it's not just persons with disabilities, but also uh, caregivers, 
employers. So spoke to the whole range. Um, Nippon, 75 years of India's independence is what we're commemorating. Yet not everybody has the kind of independence that we should have in India. What are the one or two things that you've been propagating both through FICI and CII and of course the many different hats that you wear? And in which states have you found uh, an amount of some success? Uh, so when you talk about propagating, I actually think that there are three big challenges persons with disabilities are faced. And I think these are three challenges that Firoz and Meena have indirectly mentioned here and in, beautifully in the book as well. So congratulations to them on the book, first of all. I should have mentioned that in the first answer. Uh, but the three big challenges, I like to call them the three A's. Uh, one is attitudes. I think uh, one really needs to change the perspective towards persons with disabilities and uh, look at them for what they can do and not for what they cannot do. And I think that is really a, the big uh, change that India needs to make uh, in that transformation. And that will come through sensitization at a young level. Uh, you have environmental education in school now, you have sex education, why not have disability education too? Where you celebrate stories of people with disabilities who have achieved, but also sensitize people on how to interact with persons with disabilities. Uh, some of the education boards have now started encouraging uh, equal opportunity at school. Uh, when I went to school, it was a big challenge that most people actually told my mother that uh, Nipun should go to a special school for persons with disabilities, but uh, luckily for me, she insisted that I go to a normal school. Going to a normal school is not only going to help a person with a disability, but I think it's also going to help the rest of society because they become more sensitive to those persons with disabilities and also appreciate what they have. Uh, the second is accessibility. I, I think that's the most uh, visible thing that really one needs, but accessibility today is not just in terms of physical infrastructure, but it's also in terms of technology and software, etc. Companies like SOP, Firoz's SAP and Microsoft and others have been doing a lot of work in uh, encouraging accessibility for people with visual challenges, for example, or with people with various learning and intellectual disabilities so that their softwares are accessible, etc. And the third is affordability, which you mentioned, you know, where you spoke about cost of living. For a person with a disability, it is much higher. Uh, through public infrastructure, through opportunities, etc. How can governments and uh, the private sector really cover that in that sense? So I think those are the three big challenges uh, when it comes to persons with disabilities. Uh, some of the states that have been doing a good job, uh, I think some states have done a decent job in some areas and others in other areas. Uh, Kerala comes across as one of the states that has been winning the national award regularly for encouraging persons with disabilities. I know they've even made things like the beaches accessible in that sense. Uh, but I think one needs to add a more competitive spirit among states in that sense. And I'm actually long propagated that maybe there should be a rating system where, uh, just like a stock market where you can see which companies are going up and which companies are going down. Uh, in the smart city campaign, for example, there could be a rating system every year on which cities are doing well in terms of accessibility and which not. That could add uh, some tangible uh, benefit or some tangible incentive maybe for district magistrates and MLAs and MPs to encourage accessibility in the particular cities. Thank you, Nipun. Uh, Firoz, two quick questions to you. One is that, you know, he talked about attitude. Uh, in your work across so many years and, uh, and across so many, whatever, what have you seen when you've gone out to people and tried to uh, lobby them towards uh, the issue of uh, uh, disability? And the second question is, uh, you know, the other day I introduced you to an organization that only employed people with autism. It's a food company, it's a food manufacturing company, uh, and I was so glad to meet them on the Catalyst Forum, uh, uh, Catalyst Change Week that I chair. Uh, what do we need to do to be able to get companies, uh, private companies, to be able to create some sort of opportunity, like we've seen even in Clarks, I mean, ये जो रविंद्र यहीं पे बजा रहे हैं तो इनको ऑपरेशनिटी मिला है स्पेंसर्स का एक उन्होंने खास करके एक पॉलिसी बनाया है दैट दे विल इंप्लॉय पीपल विद डिसेबिलिटी व्हाट डू वी नीड टू डू टू चेंज माइंडसेट एंड शो दैट दिस पीपल कैन आल्सो कंट्रीब्यूट नॉट नेसेसरीली इन द वे दैट वी कंट्रीब्यूट व्हेन वी आर यंग बट इन समवॉट डिफरेंट वेज बट दे हैव स्ट्रेंथ्स सो टू थिंग्स हियर संजय सर द फर्स्ट इज दैट Corporates have to lead the way. It's pretty clear to me that uh, having worked at SAP and SAP has championed hiring people on the autism spectrum since 2013. But the reason it works is only if you show that there is a business benefit. 
if you st start thinking that, you know, I can fill up a certain percentage of quota for people with disabilities, or it is good, it is good optics, it will most invariably fail. So it has to make good business sense, and it does make good business sense. And I can tell you this from my own personal experience. We started hiring people on the autism spectrum in 2013 at SAP, and it's now one of the world's business case studies. In fact, it's a Harvard case study which proves that hiring people with autism spectrum it makes good business sense for specific tasks. What was very interesting is in 2019, six years after we started this program, the winner of the most prestigious award at SAP across 100,000 employees, across hundreds of com companies, we call it, it's called the Oscars within SAP, it's like the Oscars within SAP. The person who won the most important award for innovation was a person who was hired on the autism spectrum. Now once that happened, it was proven beyond doubt that people with disabilities are not as good, but even sometimes better than what the so-called neurotypical people. And once you've proven a business benefit, corporates will absolutely do it. And once the corporates lead the task, this Autism at Work program was started by SAP, and we have now 100 plus companies across the world doing it. And that is because it makes business sense. So the most important element is to talk from a, that it makes business imperative to hire people with disabilities. All you need to do is make some reasonable accommodations and change some of the processes to include them. And I think it's beyond doubt that they can contribute in a meaningful manner. So I think that is by far the most important thing that you can do. Nipun, we've got 100 smart cities being built in India and there's a plan to build 100 more. I remember about five or six years when they were doing an audit, I was at PwC, and I asked whether disability and access was part of this smart city project. And they said it wasn't, they hadn't put it into the plan, though it was going to be considered in the second phase. How have you been able to log lobby them now to be able to include some of these thoughts, whether it's in transportation, public transportation, or public access? Uh, the Urban Development Ministry, to be very honest, has been interacting with, pers with persons with disabilities and trying to include accessibility in the smart city campaign in that sense. Uh, but I think the problem here really is more of lack of communication between government departments and ministries, etc. For example, there's another campaign that is actually going on in India right now called the Accessibility Campaign. It was started in 2016 where they said that 100 buildings in 100 cities will really be made accessible. But uh, at some point it was reshelved and we don't even know what is the current status of the Accessible India campaign. Uh, so the, the bigger challenge really is that uh, disability is really spoken about, but I don't think it re ever really becomes a top priority. And Meena said something very interesting at the beginning of the session, really, where she spoke about how, uh, you know, somebody or the other will, get, everybody will get a disability at some point of time in life, uh, in that sense, you know. And I like to always say that everybody in this world is temporarily able-bodied. Uh, India has a young population, but India is one of the oldest uh, aging populations in the world, too. Uh, so cities really cannot be smart without being made accessible and inclusive to all. And uh, some work has been done by the Open Development Ministry over the last two years, but a lot more can be done to include persons with disabilities in the smart city campaign. Meena, towards the end of the book, you've actually put together a whole list of possibilities and solutions. Uh, give us a sense of what you think are the first two or three priorities for government to do in terms of policy, but I think more importantly, Tell us what we can do as individuals, as private people, as, ent as entrepreneurs, as people with empathy. What is it that we need to do? Governments, when they do, will they do, you know, those, those are for Allah and God to only determine. But what can we do? Uh, I think I will still talk about what the government can do because it can do a very simple thing. It has got this beautiful act. Everybody will agree one of the best the Rights of Persons with Disabilities Act of 2016, if only what is on paper could be translated to the ground. For example, a small example, you talked of accessibility. Okay, you know that the National Building Code tells you that every building, whether public or private, any building, you construct a house, an apartment, it has to be accessible. That's what the law says. 
So put the law into and practice. And yet, yet you need a separate uh, uh, permission to build a lift into an existing, existing. older high-rise building. Absolutely. So uh, buildings have to be retrofitted. Now all of these wonderful things are there in this 36 page beautiful document that we have. So that's really what I would say. And uh, also different ministries, you know, they are not aware of this act. So you'll have the health people, the transport people, not really knowing. So interdepartmental, you know, if they, if they only coordinate, then these kind of problems can be solved. Right? So those are the couple of really important uh, things. Now, as for what the public can do, as for what you and I can do, even I, my eyes were open only three years ago to a whole world of new things. So I can, of course, plug the book and say, read chapter three, which talks of the ABC of disability. So which will really tell you how you should uh, behave towards you know, persons with disabilities, how can you be sensitive? But not be condescending. No, how, exactly, how you need to be empathetic exactly, exactly. as opposed to be completely, condescending. Completely. And uh, this often happens that you tend to infantilize persons with uh, intellectual impairment, right? Speak to them as if they're small children, you know. So you don't do that, don't condescend. And of course, pity is out of the picture completely. No pity. And that's what persons with disabilities themselves say. We don't want pity. And we are like everybody else, no more, no less. So for, uh, I'll give you a little example of Ravindra. I was wondering whether uh, he has a cane, for example. Do you know that the cane is actually an extension, a white cane is an extension of the person who's blind or visually impaired? And when you guide a person, you should never ever grab the cane. What you have to do is to give him your arm for him or her to hold on to and simply walk, okay? And the person who's blind will use the cane, which is a beautiful implement, in order to walk, go across the pavement, cross the road. This is a very little, tiny little example. Or and to add to that, one of the things that we all can do, anybody who has a car or drives a motorbike, is when you see a person with disability crossing the street, try stopping. Quite simple, not so difficult, and help them. Uh, Ravindra ji, I have a question for you, but tell me what is your hope for the future? I have a question for you. मेरा आगे का जो उम्मीद है कि हम अच्छे शिक्षा ग्रहण करना चाहते हैं और कुछ ये तो हमने अभी तक नहीं सोचा लेकिन ये बताना मेरे लिए इम्पॉसिबल है बट हम अच्छी शिक्षा ग्रहण करना चाहते हैं और अभी तक आपने कहाँ तक पढ़ाई किया सो नॉर्मल हमने केवल आठवीं तक पढ़ाई की है इसके अलावा संगीत का अगर हम मैं आपको बताऊँ तो बाउंसरी के अलावा अदर इंस्ट्रूमेंट भी मैं बजा सकता हूँ so I can play harmonium, dholak, and so khanjiri, kartal. So I can uh, little, little sing a song. So you said that you want to study your study, so why did you leave the study of the written study? The music is not going to go. Yes. We have left it, that's why we have a reason for the family. And some of the things that we have done in Jodhpur, we have told you first that हमको वहाँ जो मोबिलिटी वगैरह समझ में अच्छी तरह से नहीं आई और पढ़ाई वहाँ हमारे अच्छी तरह से शिक्षा हमें वहाँ नहीं मिल पाती थी इसलिए हमने बीच में से छोड़ दिया और अब तो दसवीं ओपन करने के बाद दसवीं ओपन करना चाहते हैं हम। थैंक यू। आई एम गोइंग टू ओपन द हाउस फॉर क्वेश्चंस एंड देन वील कम ब I'll just take them in clusters. So first Mohit and then you and then Meena Ji, I'm coming now. Sanjay, first a response to Ravindra, which is open school. I'm sure we can do something through Salam Balak Trust. As far as, if you want to increase the knowledge of Sangeet, or especially in flute, if you want to learn something else, and if you need to be needed for your teacher, then we will help you in that situation. We will be very happy. Um, and I'm sure we can talk about this, uh, Sanjoy. Feroz, I have a question for you. Forgive me if it's disturbing, but uh, it's a question that often 
arises when I regard parents such as you giving their all to um, a meaningful life for the family, especially for the child. How do you regard the life for this child once you're gone? Yeah. Well, that's, you know, I'll tell you this. It's a very beautiful question, but it goes back to uh, one of the most moving incidences that has happened to me. So after my son was diagnosed, I went through a phase of depression. Um, I went through a phase of denial uh, before finally getting to a point of acceptance. And I spoke to hundreds of parents who had children with disability. And all of them had just one fundamental concern. And that is what happens to my child after I'm gone. But the one particular story, one particular incident that absolutely broke my heart was when one father said, Firoz, my wish is to live one day more than my child. Now that's heartbreaking. That any parent can ever wish to see the child go before, they, before themselves. That's the most painful experience that I've ever had. And that was a wake up call for me that that has to change. That has to change. And the reason most people were talking about that is because the children were not independent. That the children wouldn't be able to live without a caring or a support system. Uh, and that's been my mission and that will continue to be my mission maybe for my, not just my whole lifetime. I don't think I will be able, be able to resolve that completely. But that's been my mission, how to make our children live a life of independence. And actually the financial means is really not the bigger issue. And I mean, financial means are important, but it's the caregivers and the support system that is what is at the core of this question. And I'm, I must admit, I don't have the answers yet because this is a very difficult question. I deal with it 24 by seven. Um, Listen, um, my son can't even brush his own teeth, even though he can walk on his own, play, but he can't brush his teeth or take a shower. And I have to, me and my wife have to do that. So it's a, it's a, it's a question that keeps me awake at night. Uh, uh, Mohit, uh, Madhus uh, uh, we are at Madhusadan had uh, come to see me and they've now looked at shifting their son to this fully assisted place. What we do need is many more care centers at the affordable level as well as for people who can afford it, both. The interesting thing is now in the outskirts of Delhi and Gurgaon, you're finding many more of these care systems as you do also for the elderly. But again, there's no policy. These are happening outside of the present policy framework. So that policy has to be built in pretty much like with street children. You have a policy, but where's the implementation in terms of the... Please. My question is that the common person who is sitting in Ravindra name, I think so, so what is the problem that we can tell us one or two points that we can change our own life in our public life? Ravindra, this is for you. Yes, I don't have any problem at all. And what should we change if you want one or two things that people change? So we should change this, that we should all be in the mark of the truth. We are mostly time out. I'm sorry, we're not being able to take any more questions. For those of you uh, who have tuned in, I'm sorry I haven't been able to take your questions. Thank you all for watching. Uh, CK Meena, Ravindra, VR Faroz, Nipun, ladies and gentlemen, thank you. Remember, the invisible majority is out there. Uh, please do meet with Ravindra and get your book signed uh, by uh, CK Meena. Uh, Faroz, wish you were here and Nipun, take care. Thank you. Thank you. So thank you. Much. दो लाइन बोल दो, एक माइक दे दो उनको। एक सेकंड, एक सेकंड आपके पास आ रहे, maybe the life can go back to the ads and we can just take these offline। हेलो, इन्हें जब मुरली बजाई तो मेरे को ऐसा लगा जैसे साक्षात सूरदास जी मुरली बजा रहे हैं। बंजर नैन
उपरस्मा थे और मैंने एक लाइन में मुरली पे मेरे ध्यान में आई है लिखी तो किसी अननोन राइटर ने पर मेरे ध्यान आई है कि तान के तीर से छेद गई और बाण पे बाण रही है चलाई राधा रानी का एक भाव है तान के तीर से छेद गई और बाण पे बाण रही है चलाई और देखो राधा रानी ने क्या कहा है सौतन शाम के साथ रहे कर हम को कर दूर रही इतराई और दाव लगे तो ही देखन के मिस चूल्हे में डार दे पजराई और सोने की होती तो क्या करती अभिमान करे देखो बांस की जाई लेकिन सुनिए एक you. इसके साथ एक एक मिनट मुरली अभिमान कभी नहीं कर सकती कच्चे बांस से काटा गया लाल सलाख से उसमें स्वर बने हैं और जितना कष्ट कोई पाता है उतना ही वो आगे बढ़ता है अधरों से लिपटी रही छह साल तक थैंक यू थैंक यू मीना जी मीना इज अ वंडरफुल आर्टिस्ट एंड अ कारीगर वर्किंग इन विथ मेटल एंड ज्वेलरी गुड इवनिंग सर एंड मैम एंड ऑल actually i'm visually impaired and i'm doing my uh, ma and my ma'am is with me and she's very supportive and my parents are also very supportive and they i'm very fortunate to study here um, uh, ma in ma in english but i want to ask like the one man also said that we don't want any sympathy we just want to extend our knowledge so as a literary if literary person i want to read a lots of book but all the books are not available in audio so how how can we read how can we actually because as sir said his son is also kind of disabled so sometimes it's also become a reason of our depression that how will our future thank you we've got the question i'm going to ask uh, ck meena to answer yeah, it actually uh, firoz and i have been pushing pressing for our publishers to bring this book out on audible huh? we have been at every moment reminding them and we are assured that they will so i hope that will not be like a government promise i hope that that would happen and there are books available online where for the blind and visually impaired to read there are there and, and just to tell you that you know at our jaipur bookmark we've been talking with publishers to do much more audible books and audible in fact has been doing a lot of that mohit just an offer if you would like outside of the space yes i'm very happy to give you the recording oh brilliant thank so you. we've got thank two you. offers thank yes. you mohit thank, thank you. you all we've got the next session thank you so much This is this is part of our commemorating India at 75 series. Uh, thank you so much for being here.